out there in Grip World? This is Napalm Jed Johnson, and I am joined by James Rodriguez. Alan, unfortunately, had some problems with his stitches from uh, his where he had surgery on his arm, so he's not joining us today, but James and I are going strong. James, how's it going, dude? It's going pretty well. I uh, definitely want to extend my best wishes to Alan. He's a good dude, and I certainly understand the uh, frustrations with uh, with surgery complications. So, so I definitely want to extend my best wishes to to Alan on a quick recovery or hopefully a quick fix to uh, yeah. the current uh, complication that's going on. So and that's right, man, for sure. That uh, sounds like a big uh, pain in the neck that he's that he's going through. So, I know he said he's going to the hospital and get that looked at. He said they've tried some stuff. I guess it was happening all week. And then uh, stary, the extra stereo strips weren't doing the trick, They're, so he's got to go in there and get something else done. So no infections, he said, but, you know, hopefully that's, hopefully by the time we talk news. next week, he'll be in good shape. I hope so. I hope so. I thought we had a great topic planned for today. So that's uh, yeah. I was really excited about that, but totally understood. We can table that till next week, and uh, we'll have Alan, because I'd love to actually hear his perspective on that topic as well. So. Yeah, we're we're uh, ne- make sure everybody that you tune in next week. We're going to tap into James's um, actual professional specialties with a topic. Uh, don't want to share too much right now, but we don't want we don't want to spoil it for you. So make sure that you come back for episode eighty four next week because James is definitely got some uh, excellent background in this topic and it's going to be beneficial for everybody that does strength training and sports and things like that. So, uh, that'll be next week. This week we're going to talk about, Oh, go ahead, James. No, I was going to say is, you know, when I was telling some of uh, my colleagues at work, uh, the partners in, um, the uh, practice we have, you know, they were excited and they said, look, you know, any, anytime you can talk about this topic, we'd love to hear it and spread the word. So, so it, hopefully that's uh, that's a uh, podcast that gets plenty of uh, listens. You know? Yeah, yeah, no so. doubt, no doubt. Looking forward to that. Today we're going to be talking about a variety of things, including uh, some of the videos that have come out from Larry Wheels uh, training overseas with Half Thor, and uh, inter- interesting feats of strength that have come out of there. One in particular, but. Before we get to that, there's plenty of excellent stuff that's going on right here in our own backyards. James, I know you had a big training session yesterday again down south. So let's let's hear about that because I know some pretty cool things went down. Well, it was quite a milestone day. I mean, it was it was weird. It's like you know nothing extraordinary. Kind of a cool cooler than normal, damp kind of day here. Um, and it just, I don't know, we all seem to click. Uh, Jason Otto, first time he ever tried it. Like, I've never seen him even try this. He, uh, he managed to do a shallow hub of a 45-pound plate. Wow. And, I mean, it's, it's, to me, it's like it's the only plate that I have. I have a York that is pretty decent, has a pretty decent bite you can get on it, but this it's not an easy feat. We'll put it that way. Mm-hmm. Like it's a very difficult feat, and uh, and he did it first time trying. Like he just went, walked over to it, and picked it up. Hmm. And he also, I mean, Jason has now been pulling uh, pinching forty fives for probably close to a year now. He he pinched a forty five and fifty five pound combination. Oh, uh, he had it. He had it. He had it off the ground a couple of times, and he managed to to, to pull him up high and and set them down under control once, which was uh, huge. I mean, that's just so cool to see. And Gary Stewart, you know, after uh, years and years of attempting, he, uh, he, <laughs> he managed to pinch 245s yesterday wow. for the first time. So, so that was really cool to see. And, and I'll tell you, you know, I think a lot of it had to do, at least for, for them, a lot of it had to do with the fact that they usually start our training sessions with grippers. And they both decided to take this week off of grippers because I know Gary Jed has been doing your program, and he said it's just been, I mean, it's been helping him move mountains in terms of the progress he's made. 
And uh, I guess Jason was just taxed from all the gripper work he's been doing. So he took the week off, and they both just sort of went into their thick bar and pinch, and, man, they were knocking it out of the park. Wow. That's really good, man. I'm seeing this I'm seeing this video with uh with Jason's shallow hub pinch, dude. That is ridiculous, that plate. I, I can't even imagine pinching something with that kind of a hub on it. That was yeah. hard. Yeah, and he just <laughs> he walked up to it and I was like, I better roll film on this because Jason's doing crazy stuff. Like we had this loadable inch trainer that we, we loaded up to I wanna say it's around hundred and sixty pounds. And it's so weird. It's like Gary's been able to deload it with, you know, a few pounds on either side of the bell. And Jason just walked over to it the other day with no weight on the side or anything. He just picked it up. And Bob says it's a hair away from the inch dumbbell. Like it's, it's like, it's really close because of the thickness of the handle. Right. So, so yeah, I mean, big things came from, uh, from Jason yesterday for sure. He's uh, he's <laughs> he's he's on his way, and and Gary's just been doing stuff every week. That's been amazing. So. Yeah, J- uh, sorry, um, Gary has literally been mentioned in like the last three or four shows, maybe more, for stuff that he's been able to complete, different challenges, different feats. So. Well, what he's pretty, great at doing is seemingly he he trains everything, and seems to improve at it. It's like. Mm-hmm. Me, I gotta. It's like something has to take a back seat if I'm gonna focus on something and actually make progress. But he seems to be going up incrementally in everything every week. So, could be youth. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it could be you know smart programming too. I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. But he has been doing uh, amazingly lately. Oh, it's awesome. I hope it's. I hope it continues. Um, I must. Now, this is. I don't know. I'm going to throw this out there. I'm assuming that these guys are not having trouble with uh, skin tears. Like they're uh, they're staying pretty pretty good with their hand skin. Well, you know what is you know what we did the last couple of weeks was we pretty much took pinch off. Mm. I had an awful webbing tear on my left thumb, so mm. I took three weeks off of pinch, and then just kind of messing around on Wednesday. I grab my 45s without even warming up, and I usually have to warm my pinch up a lot mm-hmm. and, like, pulled them up really high and was like, nice. whoa, I'm going to save this for Saturday. You know what I mean? Right. And then on Saturday, within, like, the first two minutes of training, I transferred two 45s, and then I was like, well, let me try a 45-55, transferred the 45-55. That's two pretty decent attempts, I would say, at mm-hmm. transferring a 45-55. And then farmers walked a 45 and 55 in each hand. Not really, well, I don't want to say farmers. I probably took three or four steps, and it looked Mm -hmm. more like a, you know, late-night drunken shuffle, like I was stepping in post holes. But, but, you know, still, to hold them and and carry them for a few steps, that was certainly a a first for me. So you took three weeks off of pinching when you got um, the webbing tear? I had to, because it was like, I would take two weeks and it would tear again. Yeah. And it was like, well, I'm just going to take three weeks. Right. And I'm going to train everything else and I'll go back to pinch. And, yeah, it was a good session. Okay. Well, I had I, the 55s off the hand, uh, off the ground with my right hand again, but I couldn't lock them out. I see. So that's, I see. All right. that's, so that's good. So it sounds like you ended up, like, getting some kind of a, a bounce back in strength, too, a rebound and uh, increases in strength from that, from that time off, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think sometimes that's part of the thing with, with, with pinch. You know, I have this micro-loading program that I do, and a lot of times I think, you know, I'll see these little gains, and I'm like, all right, well, it's kind of a small gain. My holds weren't as good, and, and I don't take the time off that I should. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm dumb about anything, it's rest, yeah. you know. So, so I think, you know, I'm going to start working that in a little bit, especially with pinch. Taking a little more uh, rest. I'd love to actually hear your thoughts on that. Well, I mean, I I, I definitely think there's value in taking some time off every once in a while. Uh, with my clients, we build that in on a regular basis, deload periods. I don't necessarily do it myself because, <laughs> I, dude, I swear every time I've ever done it, I've ended up getting hurt. Um, 
Yeah. Like I'll either take a week off or deload, and then I'll strain something in my back, so it's like a a, a bad omen or something like that. But uh, you know, there seems to be value in it. Uh, I know that when I when I take like the majority of a week off before a competition, my hands feel like a million bucks in the competition. So, um, and I'm you know able to set PRs. But recently, I mean, I haven't needed the time off to set PRs, dude. I just, I mean. I don't I I can't really I don't want to be too secretive but like a couple of the lifts that I pulled off yesterday were way beyond anything that I thought I'd be able to lift and I've been they're thick bar lifts and I've been training a ton of thick bar. So Oh wow. Awesome. Um I will say that uh um I got let's see. I think it was Tuesday of last week. I got 403 for a double and a single, and maybe, like, a couple other singles. And then 393 I got for, like, a, a set of three or four. So oh, wow. I have never been able to do those numbers before. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, right now we're training more implements than I think I've ever trained all at one time uh, over a four-day split, or a four-workout split over three days. And... Um, I mean, it's I'm responding well to it, but some of the things that I was able to do yesterday were just out of this world. Um, but the, awesome. the reason I brought up the skin tears, James, is because uh, I've been dealing with one on my left thumb, which did not open up this week, thankfully, so I'm hoping that I'm on the mend. But Luke has a tear on both thumbs right now that opens up pretty much every workout that he tries for a maximal lift on any Mm -hmm. pinch device. And I'm not saying, you know, it's one particular pinch device. It's any pinch device, any block weight, uh, pinch block device. All those things are opening him up. It's, 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 I've never seen him tear this many times, uh, ever. Like he's, he's able to do generally more volume than me on, on stuff before a tear and he's pretty yeah. much opening up both thumbs every single time. So it's been a big frustration for him. In fact, I'm, I'm, uh, lotioning multiple times a day. I was, I've done it twice since the, since we've been on the call. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing everything that I can. And I yeah. know that he's doing a lot too. So it's interesting that you took three weeks off from pinching and now it sounds like your skin is much better. Plus, you've seen some strength increases, so that's good. Yeah, it's kind of strange. It's like I'll, it's like I, I get like a little warning from my thumb. That's like, hey, I'm about to tear. Like this one little layer of skin comes off, and then mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, do I really want to push it? And then most times, you know, I don't listen to that mm-hmm. little warning sign, and I, and I tear, and then I end up setting myself back. But what I've figured out, at least for me is that I can train pinch about twice a week if I'm doing holds with about about 80 to, to 90% of, of my one rep, rep maximum. If I do those holds and I'll, I'll get like a callus there, you know, it, where, exactly where I need it kind of thing. And then yes. it's like I'm good. I'm, uh, it's like I'm good. And then it's once every couple of months I'll get one of these tears. Right. You know? maybe, uh, maybe Luke is just too strong for his skin. Well, it's what's funny, James, is he's tearing in a in a spot that's not even a contact spot. So it's wow. not even like the edge of the plates or the bevel is ripping him. It's like it's literally like at a transition point on his skin where it goes from web skin into normal thumb skin. Like you know how the web yeah. is a different kind of flimsy, weak skin. Um, yeah. It's like a it's like a wrinkle or a crease, a natural wrinkle or a crease in the skin to, that separates the two types of skin and that's where it's tearing, and it's it can be a half inch, maybe even a full inch distance away from the contact point of his thumb. So, wow, wow. Yeah. I've, yeah, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. I, I will say, and I don't know if it's just, if this is just sort of a coincidence, but I noticed that when I was training hammer levers, for some reason, like maybe the where the hammer was falling down on my thumb, when I would really pull my wrist back, you know, I, I I would get like my skin would toughen up there, so I don't know if that's something he wants to try to implement. Like as yeah. far as, as as far as the lotions, like I've used the O'Keefe's working hands, but yeah. I I can't stand that greasy feeling. Right. You know what I mean? 
Yep. So I'm trying to like use uh, like I think the latest one I've been using like a Vino I think and it's actually not too bad. Oh. So, yeah, yeah cause I, I was. It doesn't get a, as cold here, but yeah. I still my hands in the winter will crack and bleed. So yeah. Well, we were talking about other factors that had nothing to do with training. Like for instance, when he was full in in full time physical therapy, he was constantly. Uh, using different lotions as you know lubricants for massage purposes and stuff like that in his in his uh day to day work activities and now he's not doing that now he's welding so he uh, doesn't get well, that constant yeah. application of oils and lotions onto his hands um plus he's he's you know it's extremely cold right now he's out there welding in his shop that isn't fully heated he's got gloves on um, so that, yeah. that could probably create some kind of weird environment for your skin having gloves on all, all day. Um, and plus his hands just naturally sweat a lot. I mean, that's probably a big reason why he's the chalk whisperer, because his hands are <laughs> moister than most people's. So that's a little yeah. X factor, too, that you can't really you can't really plan around. So... Yeah, so he's been hmm. he's been dealing with it, man. So wow. We had, yeah, I wonder uh, sometimes. Yeah, I wonder sometimes if like a month off or something for for him might help, and just a month mm-hmm. of like, you know, lotioning. And I understand he's got a business to run, so it's like yeah. he he's got to be out there welding. But mm-hmm. you know, maybe just trying to really focus on skincare for a month and then go back to it, maybe he wouldn't have the reoccurring problem. I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's not my area of expertise. Right. It's pretty much just tribal knowledge and, you know, uh, uh, a lot of trial and error on my part. Yeah. So the only th- the only thing that's ever helped me was uh, to really heal was just time off, like you said. And mm-hmm. when you're when you're not able to take that time off, it just ends up damaging. I did try something that someone on YouTube suggested. If anyone wants to hear it, they suggested colloidal silver, um, mm-hmm. which is, I guess they they use it on skin to prevent bacteria. Uh, when someone has a burn, like burn victims, they put it on their skin, this colloidal okay. silver. So I, I got a small tube of it from the pharmacy, and what I did was I would I squirted it on a Band-Aid and then put the Band-Aid right on the cut where my where it's cut on my thumb, and I would have that on my thumb the whole day. So what it would do is it would keep my thumb real moist, and hmm. I would probably do that like you know once, twice a day. And I think it's helped, but I wouldn't say that it's been a dramatic change in in my in the quality of that area, you know, over anything else. So it is something that you can that you can try if anyone ever gets a tear. But <clears throat> I, I can't say that it's like, oh, wow, it fixed me up 100%. There's no way I'm going to say that. But um, I guess it's been part maybe of the it- equation. Yeah, it might expedite the process a little bit, too. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Um, I put up a video on YouTube yesterday. We had a, a visitor, uh, Chase Wiley. He's actually I saw that. about an hour away. I, I had it in my head that he was from Buffalo, but he's a professional strongman competitor. He's uh, in the 260 range, big old beard on him, about six foot tall, Um he came down yesterday. We did a workout from about 9 to 12, and he lifted the blob the first time he ever crossed paths with it. So awesome. got that on film. Um, he did 200-plus on the Rolling Thunder, uh, came really close to getting 393 on the axle, and we never even started doing the axle until about two and a half hours in, two hours in. So um, wow. very impressive performance from this guy for a training session yesterday. Um uh, I, I kind of feel bad that he's been only an hour away and we've never had him down. I was totally thinking that he was from Buffalo and it would be like a three-hour, four-hour drive to get down here. So yeah. uh, it was it was nice to have him here. He said he's going to try to come for the competition on February 16th. So that's going to be really cool to see. He says he's going to try to come down again, not next week, but the following week for another training session. So that'll be cool. Um and uh, and that that group dynamic really really has been a, a nice change of pace recently, and I think it does that's help. Be something that we end up talking about here at uh, this week in grip is you know putting together a team and the benefits of mm-hmm. having that team aspect going for you. So uh, 
you know, we've seen a lot oh, of yeah. stuff come out of the <clears throat> the Texas group uh, with mm-hmm. Tanner and Adam Glass and uh, Tommy Jennings and Eric Milfeld and I believe Clay w- was there one time and there may have been other individuals that I I'm leaving out. Um, Robert Jedley was there. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. that's right, that's right. Uh, and uh, that's something that I used to do a lot back in the day. I mean, Diesel Crew is actually the name of our group that used to get together every every uh, weekend and a couple times during the week to train, going all the way back to, like, 2003. So mm-hmm. um got away from that for a while, and mainly it was just me and Luke for most of the time. But uh, it's been really fun having a, a group of guys training together. Um, Definitely. Uh, you know, let's let's do a couple of feats, James. Maybe um, give some people some recognition that um, that they've for some some of the stuff that they've posted recently. Okay, sound good? Sure. One All of right. the things I would ask you is, yeah. uh, when after he lifted the blob and after he lifted the uh, the the, the two hundred pounds on the rolling thunder, did you think about trying to you know see if he could do crush to dust? Was that something that came up? Because anytime I hear about somebody going 200 pounds on a rolling thunder, I start yeah. thinking, huh, crushed to dust. Well, hmm. I have no doubt that he would, he would get that, James. We didn't even, it did, well, didn't even cross our minds. Um, right around the time that we started doing Axel, he pulled a number three out and closed it. So <laughs> wow. that's, I mean, that's after we already did all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, so he, he's going to be one to watch. Not fresh. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He is going to be one to watch for sure. Yeah, he's you know, got one, some tremendous potential. One of the feats that blew my mind this week, and I don't know why it continues to blow my mind because it's like, I mean, I've seen the guy do stuff like this before, but Joe Sullivan with a sixteen-pound hammer lever for like, for like cardio reps. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just it is it is every time I see it, it's like. It's amazing, and then it's almost disturbing, you yeah. know? It's not well, disturbing out of reasons of, like, jealousy, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing like that, you know, because I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've, the most I've ever done a 16-pound hammer is, like, three reps, you yeah. know what I mean? So if I see him do that, I'm like, that's crazy, and I want to give the guy props. But then it gets to a point where it's like, gosh, has anyone in history, this side of maybe Slim the Hammer Man, been able to do that? I mean, I'm not aware of anybody. Uh, the only person that I can think of that's done anything close to that, I, I, I all I can think of is John Eaton. Like he, he might have knocked out some repetitions with a 16-pound hammer. Uh, yeah. But I mean, nowhere near 15. I think, I think Joe did 15 reps and said he felt like he probably could have done five more, but he was watching the time limit on his clock, so he stopped because <laughs> he knows the Instagram will only post a one-minute video. Yeah, yeah. Well, he had posted it on YouTube, and 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 uh, Renderly had said uh, he was like, yeah, he said something, and 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 I was like, yeah, you know, like one rep is world class with that. Like that's it, it is it is crazy. It, it, I mean, it's amazing. It, it's just it's it's nuts. And I, I've seen that he's starting to do, you know, some of the sledge deadlifts into a lever too. So he's he he's starting to develop that radial deviation as well. Mm-hmm. Is that is that ulnar deviation, and I'm I'm guessing he's doing it because I saw that he's he's got an arm wrestling table now, and yeah. he's uh, probably going to get into that. Yeah. So. Well, he's he's massive, and when he first started coming down, he was like my body weight, maybe a couple pounds heavier. Um, of course, he's got a, an inch or two on me height wise, and now he's up like two seventy five. So yeah. in the in the the year and a half, two years that he's been doing this, he's he's put on a lot of muscle. And he doesn't do, like, bodybuilding or powerlifting. Like, the only thing that he really does is, like, you know, axle deadlifts. He does no squats. I don't know if mm-hmm. he does, like, lunges or anything like that, but I know, he do, I know he does rows, things like that. But he's put on a lot of muscle primarily just by doing grip stuff. So yeah. I know he was he's wow. outgrowing his clothes and his wife's getting angry and stuff like that. He might have to go on a little cut. But, yeah, well, grip's um, an expensive hobby. You know, yeah. sometimes it's grip implements, sometimes it's larger clothes. Yep, <laughs> mm-hmm. for sure. I'll tell you, um, 
there's a guy out here, James, I don't know if you follow him on Instagram, but he is a very impressive dude, and he does exactly the opposite of what we just talked about with the team atmosphere. This guy is a one-on-one, one-man show, uh, and he is doing some damage. His his name is Ben Champoli, and his name on Instagram is BAC124761246. Is he the guy from like New Hampshire? Uh, he might be from New Hampshire. Uh, I think that is. He posted, I know like, he's an from inch. New England because he drove to the foundry to get the inch dumbbell that he bought from. Yeah, him. yeah. So we're talking about the same guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Bald headed I, I saw guy him lifts in um, like wife beaters and shirtless a lot in his garage. Yeah. Um, and he's done like really heavy block weights. He's done, Mm -hmm. well, he's lifted the inch dumbbell, like, for the, you know, to about knee height or so. uh, I saw that. Already. I mean, he's only had it for a couple weeks. So, I mean, it's hard to tell sometimes how big a dude is, but he looks like he's probably, like, 220, 250 range. Yeah. Good-sized, meaty hands, big forearms, lots of potential there. So it would be cool if he got involved in grip sport. Um, it would. It but would. I mean, I'm sure. Holy cow, that's a drive down to my place. But maybe he could carpool. Yeah. Maybe you could. Maybe you could carpool, brother. Lots of guys there coming down from there. Or I mean, you know, if somebody can link him up with uh, Rob Vigeon or something, mm-hmm. and he could go and train with the guys over at uh, Fitzsimmons' place in Massachusetts. So, yeah. you know, those. I mean, it's more arm wrestling oriented. But I mean, you know, when I when I met Rob, for example, like he was. He was all a grip guy. I mean, it was it was amazing stuff, though. Like, <laughs> I'll never forget, like, when Rob was just getting into arm wrestling, he had already beaten a really good pro, a guy named Jerry Cole. And I had met him. We were in the same weight class at the, uh, the Connecticut Fall Classic. It was probably 2003 or something. Mm-hmm. And, or 2004, maybe. And then... Um, he, after the tournament, we pulled a little bit, and he said he wanted to drive down and get some training from us. And the first day he comes to train, he, he puts now, – now, mind you, this is how long this was ago. Like, my friend Vic Sargent, who we used to train at his place in Bristol, Connecticut, his daughter was probably four years old at the time. I think she's like, I don't know, 20 now or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> she, he told her, he said, all right, get on my back and, and put your arms around my neck. And she did, and then he grabbed a rolling thunder that mm-hmm. was hanging from the, the uh, like an eye bolt in the ceiling, yep. and he did a pull up. Yep. With one I've hand. I've seen him seen him do the same exact <laughs> feat, dude. Uh, he did that after uh, the battle for grip supremacy in 2003, <laughs> and I want to say the way that he did that feat was, man. He he did the one arm pull up on the Rolling Thunder that was hanging from a cage, but then at the same time he was holding something else in his other hand. I almost yeah. want to say it was like a hub on a loading pen or something like that. And well, it all it stopped us all dead. Like we just yeah. looked at it like, like what is this guy? You know, right. <laughs> we were almost afraid in that moment because we were like, did he just do that? You know, yeah, like did we just see that? Amazing stuff, but. I, w- I mean, look, I know Rob is, like, fully invested in arm wrestling now, but, you know, he's obviously still got an amazing grip. And the last time I spoke with Rob, he was doing, like, thumbless rows with, like, a four-inch, some obnoxious, like, dumbbell handle. You know what I mean? So, and with a lot of weight. So I'm sure, you know, Rob still grip-wise could be a benefit to him, and uh, it would be cool to see those two get together and knock out some feats, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure, man. I know he, in I think it was March of 2017, he got a good, some really good air under the inch dumbbell, probably like a foot. He pulled it up, pulled it up off a foot, off the ground. Yeah. So that, and, was, and, and um, I'm, I'm, that was John Eaton's inch, too. We I had that on loan, and we took it up there to Syracuse, and then John came over and got it, brought it back to his house. Oh, wow. Yeah. So one of the things about uh, uh, this gentleman, what's his name again? Ben Champoli. Ben Champoli. Yeah, I, I thought I saw him pinching. I want to say it was six tens with a pipe as well. Yep. Mm-hmm. That was yeah, a, a pretty he's impressive. Been working on that for a while too, adding weight. 
Yeah, yeah. So, and that guy's certainly one to watch for sure. Yeah. Um, another thing I saw Tanner. Tanner is blowing up, dude. He's like he's I know. close to two hundred pounds now, and he he did a number four COC gripper for eighteen seconds on the silver bullet here this past Ooh. week. Oh boy. Yeah. He might be he might be pushing that twenty second mark soon, like real soon. Oh yeah. No doubt. Like no doubt about it. Maybe Arnold Classic soon. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. That'll be uh that'll be just the right time for him to do it. I mean, this is the guy that uh you know, I've argued with, with people with one one particular individual on YouTube, um, about who the pound for pound best gripster is and Tanner's my guy when it comes to that debate. Yeah. So Yeah, I mean, at least stateside for sure. Yeah. One question I would ask, I don't I don't know much about uh Uni Mahonen, uh mm. other than like some of the ridiculous feats I've seen. He looks yeah. like a smaller guy in terms of body weight. Mm. What size hands does he have? Do you know? Is uh, there... For for uni, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really don't know, buddy. That that's that's a good question. If I yeah. ever saw it listed somewhere, I've forgotten since then. So but yeah, he's a he's another one pound for pound guy, and uh, the, uh, Philip Kashaba too. It's mm-hmm. another guy. Pound you know, for I pound, haven't heard but... anything from him in a really really long time. Have you? Yeah, Have I know you what you mean. Anything? No, no, but uh, when he <laughs> when he does come around, it seems like he does things that you're like, wow, that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, and of course, you know, you have the Jerome Blooms as well. But yeah, I mean, Jerome is—he doesn't have a Tanner-sized hand, so the the yeah. thick bar stuff that Tanner does is just uh, wow. It, yeah. it, you know, it's amazing. It's really amazing. So I would—I think I would agree with you. I'd give Tanner the nod. Right. Um, what else? What are, any other uh, big stuff that we saw this week go down in Grip World? Okay, so. The day that I went, I, I was sitting on this last week. I didn't say anything about it uh, just because I was waiting for them to get the video out. But since they just posted the video uh, this past week, when I was over at Juji Mufu's gym, they had Devin Larratt do a deadlift competition with Tom, basically, you know, because Juji's deadlift is like 200 pounds above theirs. You know what I mean? Right. But, uh, but it, it was interesting. I had said to Tom, I said, well, why didn't you get Devin on an axle doing, you know, thumbless double overhand? And he said, well, wait till you see what Devin pulled on a wrist wrench. So I, I don't know if you saw the video. I didn't watch Devin, the video, so definitely, definitely go into detail here because I didn't catch it. So they don't weigh the weights there ever. They just basically attach a loading pin to, to uh, uh, you know, the handle and then, you know, put the weights on and just add up the weights. So it was kind of confusing, but it looked like he did about 105 pounds, at least that's what was posted on the screen, thumbless on the wrist wrench with as straight an arm as Devin can get because he can't straighten his arms out. So it was, it was, pretty, it was pretty wild to see. Not surprising since I, you know, had gripped up with him and, and felt his, his cupping pressure. And then he had said, yeah, I'm pretty much spent without my thumb. And he started doing it with a full hand. And they had posted that he had gotten up to 130 pounds. Wow. Which is otherworldly. Yeah. I mean, considering his hand size and how strong his cupping is, and how strong his thumb is, it doesn't surprise me. Like, it doesn't surprise me, but that is a number that, like, I've never seen. You know, I've never even, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say I haven't considered it was possible, because I remember seeing videos of, you know, Kenny Smith doing, like, 120 pounds on it. Right. You know, the arm wrestler, Kenny Smith. So, so I was like, yeah, I mean, it's not that it's not possible, but... Then when he actually did it, it's just sort of like, yeah, and, and it, was a, it was a strange wrist wrench replica. I don't think it was Luke's. I think it was somebody else's. It might even yeah, be there. It might even be there. Yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, whatever it was, it was an obscene amount of weight that he pulled on that. 
that's considerably cool, over a hundred pounds. So yeah. Yeah. Tell me this, James. I, the part that I did see, he was grabbing stuff and saying that he doesn't like to grab onto stuff. What, yeah. Are you familiar with what he's talking about there? Is that sure. something that he avoids uh, in order to keep from getting like an overuse injury, or what, what's your what's your thoughts there? Well, a lot of what he tries to do, and like if you if you watch him even training people, he'll he'll ask people to. Like, don't stay too firm in your grip because of arm wrestling. He doesn't like to stay firm with his grip. It's like, it's so hard to explain, but it's like when you're arm wrestling somebody, you want to flatten your fingers down into sort of this cupping kind of, 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 of place, but not squeeze or clamp. It's, it's like you only want them to feel the strength in your fingers when they start to try to pronate through them. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. It's like you don't want to give away anything, like a tell. Like, it, for him, and this is what I get, it's like if you're pulling against a really good arm wrestler, you know, you're not going to be able to take everything you want in the grip because they're going to know. I mean, they're, gonna, they're not stupid. They've been doing it long enough. They're going to know what you're doing. So you want to go up there, get – the slightest advantage you possibly can, flatten your fingers out, you know, and then on the go, that's when they'll feel the pressure in your fingers. So it's right. almost like you don't want to telegraph where you're going kind of thing. Make sense? I see. Yep, yep, that makes sense. So cool. his thing is he's a strap arm wrestler. He wants to slip. You know what I mean? Right. And when you pivot off of your elbow – in the straps, that strap can come down your wrist and lower the leverage point. So it's mm-hmm. actually easier for you to pull back and you can pull back with more pressure. So, right. so that's a lot of what he's talking about. Like his thing okay. is, if someone starts to, to move your wrist in any direction, let go. Mm. And it's not that you don't want to have a strong wrist, because you do, but you don't want to get in the habit of grabbing and squeezing because that's not what arm wrestlers do. Right. I got Does that you. make sense? Yeah, buddy. Thanks for going over that explanation. I appreciate it, man. No problem. Um, there's another dude we got to mention for the for the feats this week, man. This is crazy. Um, John, let me see. I want to get his name right. John Matchnick, uh, JT yeah. Mac, 89. Yeah. Dude, this guy did a, a lift of 110 pounds on the Ironman pinch block, bro. I saw that, actually. And I was like, wow. I mean, that's a – I don't know. Like, I don't – maybe it's just me. But, Jed, I am way better on, like, a, a, a Euro, which I'm not great on, but I'm way better on, like, a Euro or, or actual plates mm. than I am on any kind of pinch block. So, yeah. I know what you're saying, man, and, uh, like, the pinch block from Iron Mine in particular has been very hard for me to I, – I mean, I've had to specialize on this for uh, over a year. It's been over a year of consistent training, like, that I have not taken that out of my training. And I'm still oh, wow. not at 100 pounds. So I did just yeah. break into the 98. So I got, like, 98.2 or something like that the other day. Yeah, and like maybe three weeks ago, I got ninety-seven. So it's taking me three weeks at a time to put a pound on. So in about six months, I might be up to about one ten. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's it's just not that particular pinch block. It's just not optimal for me. And I feel like other so many other devices out there are more optimal. Um, I, I just, yeah. I just do you can't think... do what I want to on that pinch block? Yeah, I know what you mean, and and that's it's the th- that's the thing. It's like. There are certain pieces of grip equipment that are very frustrating, you know what I mean, to trade with. One of the things I would say, though, do you think it's sort of like the flask where at first, like, you know, I'll never forget, like, I pulled, like, 84 pounds or something on the flask at the first southern squeeze, and people were like, whoa, and I was like, is that really? That's like, they feel like a pair of slick 45s to me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's, that's how I was thinking about it. And then, like, what you saw was when people started getting the flask, yeah, there were very few people getting out of the 80s at first. Right. You know? And a yeah. lift of 90 pounds was, like, amazing. 
And then I think when people started getting used to the implement, you know, you started, or, or how to chalk the implement or whatever it was, that's when you started seeing the numbers get up to around 100. And I mean, you pulled like, what, 120 on it or something, right? Yeah, 128 so, at uh, King Kong this year. That's obscene. That's crazy, dude. Well, the, the you biggest got, you part of the flask for me is the chalk. There's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you remember what yeah. we all went through at uh, South Jersey 4. I, I, when, I, uh, I, when, when the ugh. chalk kept changing. So yes. that, was, that was huge. So the, I could not get a good grip on that flask at mm-hmm. South Jersey 4. It was, it was frustrating. And it's like, like, I know what you mean about, about you know, chalking it, but there were days when I was actually training it exclusively, and I just really wanted to get over 100 pounds on it. And once I got, like, to 100, like, I had one good day where I pulled, like, 102 points something, and then I never trained on this thing again. You know what I mean? But I had this, there was this thing about training it. It's like I could, it, it, there were days chalk wouldn't stick to it, and 75 pounds felt impossible. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then there oh, were yeah. other days where I could walk up to it with 90-something and just casually go over and pick it up. Mm-hmm. So, it, it, I don't know. I mean, that was that was a very difficult implement for me to train and see progress on, personally. Right. Yeah. Me too. Plus, it, it tore the hell out of me, like, the first two months that I was training on it. So, that <laughs> Which was, is funny, because Luke has said the same thing. Luke yeah. said that it, 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 it doesn't tear me. That was one of, the good, that, one of the things I liked about the flask, was that it didn't tear my thumb up at all. Right. But, but, yeah, then I heard Luke say it's the only thing that tore him. Well, he said that at the time. Now yeah. it sounds like he tears all the time. But. Yep. Yeah, man. Um, why don't you tell us about this uh, challenge dumbbell that you curled this week, James? This looks pretty interesting. Oh, um, yeah. You know, I, I was messing around with it before my shoulder surgery, and I was able to do reps of two, kind of dropping it down and then pronating through it. Like, I didn't want to drop it down in kind of a, a hammer curl position because I didn't want the handle to slide down so that I'd end up, like, lifting it essentially with my forearm. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, because so of the that, bracing effect. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to lower it down and then pronate through it. And it's, uh, it's 98 point something pounds empty. And uh, I, I was, you know, it's interesting. I, we were talking last week because Jason has, like, a – 118 pound dumbbell with like a oblong two and a half inch handle. It's this really strange like egg shaped handle. And I was talking about how, yeah, I'd like to preacher curl that. But then I was like, well, let me mess around with my, uh, my circus bell again. So, so yeah, I think uh, just messing around with that, I, I kind of feel like I could do Jason's dumbbell but I think the big issue is going to be is when my arm is fully extended, will I be able to hold on to the bell? Because it's going to roll really hard against my fingers. So, right. Huh. And that's the thing. Thick bar preacher curl workouts, oh, gosh. They blow your forearms up. Really? So, oh, my God, yeah. Hmm. I, I used to, when I arm wrestled, I, I, a, a friend of mine, Ralph Petrazuli had made me a dumbbell that was perfect. It was a perfect fit for me because I could actually connect my thumb and my middle finger around it. So it was like one point, I don't know, it's like one and maybe seven-eighths inch, yeah. maybe a little bit smaller. So I could okay. actually like, and, and I was doing like heavy wrist curls and heavy preacher curls with it, and my gosh, it blew up my forearm just doing the preacher curls you know, as much as any other workout that I've done. Right. So, That's really and it, cool. it really kind of put those things, it kind of connected those things. Yeah. You know, the forearm, the bicep, the pronator. So it was good, you know, specifically for our wrestling. Yeah. What does that feel like at the bottom, James? I mean, you're basically, you're getting down there to like almost completely straight arm position. I mean, is that like... Are you feeling that in your shoulder? I mean, where where it looks like it would freaking hurt to go through that that deep of a range of motion with a preacher curl. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't feel good. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's funny. It's like every week. I, I mean, right now I'm doing sort of this uh, four by four program, 
every week I get to my like third to fourth set of four and I start feeling like almost I mean there's so much fatigue it's almost numb and I have to like willpower my way through that last set mm-hmm. and it is uh, yeah it's, it's strange it's like you feel it a little bit in your forearm for sure but uh, the inside of your bicep and certainly your shoulder um, definitely get uh, a good bit of strain. We'll put it that way. I've yeah, had it where I've gotten cramps in my neck, you know, pulling the weight up. I'll get like, you know, a cramp that kind of runs down my trap, down to my trap in my neck, and that's that's no fun. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, I don't know. Like somebody was telling me, you know, how could you be confident straightening your arm with that much weight and they they asked me that and I told them I said you know it's I'm not all that confident you know mm-hmm. <laughs> whenever I put like a 120 plus pound dumbbell even lighter sometimes you know over the edge of that preacher and I go beyond what I call the point of no return where you know you break parallel with the ground yeah you know I'm sitting there thinking don't tear your bicep tendon James come on right and your adrenaline starts kicking and you know yeah. your heart starts racing but but uh you know I love it and you know I figure if uh <laughs> if something tears doing it you know I I went for it you know what I'm yeah. saying I won't regret yeah, I it you. Um how about this Gareth keeping James have you have you followed him on Instagram he seems to yeah, be I do. pretty pretty talented with the rolling thunder I'm seeing a 105 and a 110 kilogram lift from him Yeah I saw that too where is he from uh, that's a good question. I almost want to say that he's not from America. Yeah, I thought uh, he was like British. Yeah, or UK's something. first <laughs> qualified biofeedback trainer, so he's yeah from the UK. Yeah. Yeah, very strong. Yeah, amazing lift on that for sure. Yep, yep, yep. And he's been using. I the, think we're seeing. Well, I'm sorry. We're I'm, I'm just saying he's. Uh, I think he's one of the guys that I found using the hashtag this week in grip which we're up to about 2,700 uses of that, up, up over 2,700. Yeah, so I tried that, to add a bunch of this week. <laughs> I had to pick up some of the slack. I, I don't know what Hunsacker's at, but I had, to, I had to pick up some of the slack, so I added a few this week. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, and then he did some just un, ungodly weight, 625 double overhand hold with um, like a barbell and uh, those wagon wheels on the bar. And then every bit of space was taken up except for a little bit for the collars. It was pretty insane. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Brian's, Brian's nuts, man. I'll tell you, though, one thing I've done that Brian recommended was this. Um, he does them for his denny lifting, for any kind of suitcase-style lifting, where he does these sort of oblique raises, these sort of side raises, where he grabs the dumbbell from the floor, or, the, or a kettlebell from the floor, and he just, like, lifts his body up straight, you know, and exaggerates kind of the lockout position. Mm. I've been doing those for, like, ever since I kind of talked to him about it, and my gosh, those are great. I also implemented uh, your uh, crunches this week on the ball, extending oh. the arms out. Yeah. Yeah, dude. There's, there's a few morning. different things you can do with that. If you, if you want to mix it up a little bit, you can also kind of, like, swirl on the ball, like move uh, clockwise and counterclockwise with the elbows. And yeah. then also you can rotate to the side. So you can you start on both elbows, then you start moving both your arms to the right so that you land on your left shoulder. And then yeah. and naturally when I say land, I mean you're, that's your end point. I'm not saying crash down on it because you'll end up falling <laughs> off the ball. But Bounce if you go back and forth real and slow on that, it is torturous on your core. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to try those next week. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fun stuff. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm 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 trying to I'm trying to get that area in order. If you know what I mean. Yeah, well, it's good for active rest, and the stronger your core is, the stronger everything else is going to be. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely encourage it. Um, yeah, I actually didn't see that lift from Brian. I don't think. So it that's. Was, uh, yeah, it's just on the list there. Very colorful as always, because he's got his different colored plates. So oh, it'll, is he it'll catch your eye when you stream candy down striping? through there. Yeah. Are you candy stripe the plates for yeah. us? Not, yeah. Not, <laughs> not perfectly like before, but uh, he's right. been a good effort towards it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Another so, hey, another uh, extremely we'll impressive lift from Tanner on the Napalm's Nightmare, two and three eighths handles, four hundred and forty pounds, dude. That's ridiculous. That uh, yeah, is that a was huge lift. I couldn't remember if that was this week or last week, but I saw that and I just was sitting there thinking to myself, like, you know, on a shorter loading pin, a lot of times I'll do deadlifts on a shorter loading pin. Yep. And, you know, I have, like, a very short loading pin, and it, it seems to be better on my back, you know. So I'll, I'll do them with just a one-inch handle and, like, no straps, just to, you know, uh, on my leg day kind of thing, on one of my leg days. And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking about that weight. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course, I mean, I could pull it off the ground and everything. But then I start thinking, I'm like, okay, so now we're talking about a two and three inch handle. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, I get that Tanner's got giant ET-looking hands, but it's a two and three inch handle. Yeah, that dude. weight must, I can't imagine what that weight would feel like yeah. on a handle that thick. That's nuts. Right. Well, just yeah. wait until he strengthens his uh, deadlift up and actually gets like some back strength to complement his hand strength. You're going to see even crazier stuff go down, I'm sure. Well, what do you think? Do you think that he is one of those candidates for a 500 pound axle? Uh, probably down the road, yeah. I don't think it would yeah. come like by the time he hits the Arnold by any chance, but by no, any no, 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 no. But yeah. uh, he's I, young though. So. Yeah, he's super young, and his his hands are big, and plus he, he's got that background from climbing, and mm -hmm. uh, I think just everything lines up right. I mean, he's got a big long thumb, big long pinky. Uh, all that stuff, dude, th those are just like a bunch of cool factors where if you have any one of those features of your hand, it's going to be a benefit, and he's got all those features. So genetically, yeah, he's just perfect. advanced beyond all of us, and we can only hope to contain him. <laughs> yeah, if this was like 2001, the space oddity, it would be this big like black monolith every time Tanner appeared. Yep. You know? mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with the movie. That's right. <laughs> Uh, uh, and that music would kick on. Yeah, yeah dude. Um, it's almost time to talk about Larry Wheels. I did want to say that I saw the Adam Glass uh, busted out like a 30-foot uh, double-inch farmer's walk over the weekend as well. I don't know if you saw that, James. but No, I didn't see that. I did not yeah. see that. Gosh, I'm, I'm having trouble staying on top of all this stuff. Well, but that's and he's obviously not on amazing. Instagram anymore as far as I know, but uh, I yeah. saw it. it popped up on my phone as a recommended view. And sure enough, it was like a 30, I, I'm estimating 30 feet. It could have been shorter or longer, but it looked like about 30 feet to me uh, in, the, in, the, in their amazing. outside uh, training place that they've been going to. So, Well, that's great because yeah. those guys, I mean, Tommy and Adam and, and, and um, Tanner, you know, those guys are going to, they're going to push each other. Yeah. You know, and it, not even in a competitive way, just, you know, just being around that kind of environment, you know, pushes you. That that extra little surge of of, of adrenaline, the camaraderie, you know, it, it, I, that's that's going to help them out a lot. Those guys are going to do some amazing stuff in the year to come. For sure. Anything else before we start talking about uh, Larry Wheels? No, I mean, gosh, I saw him. Uh, well, he lifted the inch. That's right. You know, that's that's the big news. Larry Wheels uh, lifted the inch. I I didn't even know Half Thor had all those uh, those challenge bells in his um, in his gym there. I thought that was pretty cool. Right. Yeah, I didn't know that either. And I guess I guess what's going on here is Larry Wheels is like challenging himself. It's it's no longer uh, fun for him to just be good at powerlifting. I guess he wants to try the other different uh, sports of the Iron Game. So. Um, That's great. He challenged himself to do a, a bodybuilding meet, and he did well there, winning it. And then now he wants to do a strongman competition. Uh, so he went and visited uh, Half Thor, uh, and to get you know top level instruction from him. I guess he's over there for several weeks, and he he has all you know these challenge dumbbells are over there. So he gave him a try, and ended up ended up lifting the inch dumbbell. So yeah, I can't say I was surprised. I mean, the dude is extremely I wasn't strong. Either. Yeah, I, I wasn't either. It's almost like I expected it, kind of thing. But it's still impressive. It's like you know, so to to, to walk up to it and lift it the, the well, not the first attempt. I think he got it in his second attempt, right? Didn't he kind of yeah, like, it's like he didn't have his 
grip on there right on his first one. And when he when he kind of yanked on it, I was like, damn, I, I can't believe he didn't lift that. But um, then, you know, three seconds later, he bends down, picks it up, and it's like no problem, right straight to lockout. So yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty that was pretty cool. And then I saw Half Thor had uh, one of his uh, trainers there. You know, he was messing around with some of the challenge bells too. He looked like a pretty strong dude. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, he said something. Larry Wheel said something that I never considered him. And maybe this is, uh, you know, the, the, the part of me that's still maybe novice in some ways that, you know, lifting on an axle, even though he was doing it with straps, which I was like, eh, but I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the event he's going to be in will allow straps and it will be an axle. So it makes sense that he, that's how he'd be training for it. Right. Um, but he had said that, you know, the weight on an axle is actually harder to pull because the axle doesn't flex. I never considered that. Is that weird that I've never considered that, or was that like something that, you know, he'd said and you were like, oh wow, huh? I didn't and catch that he said that, but um, okay. I, I, I at the same time, dude, I don't think I've ever done enough weight on an axle in a in a strongman style lift to even have it make a difference. Um, yeah. The so I don't know if you know I did strongman for three years from '03 to '06, yeah. won a bunch of competitions. But uh, I never really got to, like, the next level. I, I only ever did amateur stuff. I qualified for nationals, never went. But um, okay. the, probably the heaviest thing that I ever did on an axle was one of the kinds where they have the tires on there, like the actual mm-hmm. tire with air, tires with air in them. And yeah. um, maybe 450 or something like that. And okay. we were allowed to use straps. But I think, as I recall, I didn't use straps because – um, I just did like the alternated grip, like a deadlift, and it was for gotcha. it was for reps. So um, you know, 450 w- wasn't enough to really, at the time, you know, 450 wasn't a lot of weight for me because I was a lot stronger back then. But you know, the rigidity of the bar or anything that never even entered my yeah. mind. So and I've never done you know enough deadlifts on you know different types of just regular barbells to even mm-hmm. consider whether they were whippy or bendy or stiff or, or whatever. So, yeah, I, I never would have even thought about that myself, James. Okay, because I remember talking to Sean Dockery at Garage Night at Nick Rosendahl's place one time, and he was saying yeah. that what he can deadlift on a axle is pretty much what he can deadlift. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there, there wasn't any difference at all. Mm-hmm. You know, but I also I remember talking to Andrew Durney at the same night, and he was saying, you know, deadlift on a regular bar and get your body stronger because it'll bring your axle up, you know? So, so yeah, kind of not conflicting viewpoints, but two certainly different, uh, uh, approaches to the same lift. But, yeah, uh, man. but, but I remember, I, I remember actually Bob Sunning telling me one time that if you do one hand deadlifts on an Olympic bar and the bar has got a little bit of a bend, you're going to pull more weight off the ground. Yeah. So, no doubt about that. So, so maybe that's kind of what Larry Wheels was getting at. Yeah, are you talking about um, are you talking about the, just the natural flex of the bar, or are you talking about if the bar is actually damaged and bent? Oh, I don't. I'm, I'm guessing if the bar is actually damaged already. Yes. Yeah, like no doubt about it. No doubt bar. about it. That will that will put a decent amount of weight on your lift. Um, yeah. Yeah, you have to be careful of that, especially if you're lifting in a gym with with crappy bars that people might have bent. Because that will definitely give you a false, a false lift as far as a max. Yeah. Um, I even remember yeah. back in the day when, um, you know, you must know the name Mike Wa, like it's pronounced Roy uh, or it's spelled Roy. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: I knew an arm wrestler. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> what was his, he? Yep. He was a strongman performer for a while. Do you remember what his name was? Was it Mike the Destroyer or something like that? I don't actually because I only know him from from arm wrestling. Okay. Like I only know him from arm wrestling. Okay. So but yeah, that's that's interesting. Right. Back in 2004, he put out this um, grip contest challenge where he, he was going to like host a competition. It was open to anybody in the world and had like prize money, maybe a thousand dollars Canadian or, or something like that. If you went and you beat Mike the destroyer 
on his top seven events or something like that. And one of the events, this is in the, I'm bringing this up because of the bent bar thing. It was mm-hmm. uh, a banana bar. He had something called a banana bar, and everybody was like, what the hell is a banana bar? Like, at this time, dude, the only two companies that were selling grip equipment were Iron Mine and Fat Bastard. So, they're, like, if there was a new piece of equipment out, everybody knew what it was because there weren't a lot of options. Yeah. But nobody knew what the hell this banana bar was, and it turned out he had some kind of a handle that um, – or or a, maybe a short barbell or something that was bent. It was actually bent, and the numbers he was putting up was they were extraordinary. They were like four, like four hundred pounds on this banana bar, and it turns out he had a bent bar. So yeah. because it was bent, and you know you're basically lifting it like a flattened rainbow. Um, you know the dynamics change. It's almost picking like picking up a a pail, you know, with a yeah. rounded handle. Because um, it won't it won't roll. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, man. Um, he wow. used to be, as I recall, he used to be like a, man, he looked like he was like 300 pounds. I don't know if you know the, the one-man gang from back in the 80s wrestling, James, but that's kind of what he yeah. looked like. He was all yeah. um, decked out in leather, black leather, dark hair, had like black sunglasses on. I remember there was a video that went around and had like this heavy metal music, and he was just like tearing deck of cards after deck of cards. <laughs> um, and then the next thing I know, he's, like, r- challenging people with the script contest. As far as I know, the contest never actually took place. Um, yeah. And then uh, then he started just using his, his real last name and was an arm wrestler or something like that. So Yeah, I, yeah, I remember him, him, actually. Yeah, What's I that? do remember him as an arm wrestler. Yeah. I definitely remember him as an arm wrestler. That's why when you said the name, I was like, I know an arm wrestler by that name. And then you yep. started talking about it, I was like, same guy. Yep, yeah. Same guy. Yeah. Yep. Well, you, you know, it's interesting. You know, I would, I, I'm, I was watching the Larry Wheels video, and I was, you know, I've always said, well, I haven't always said, but you know, when I've just seen the stuff that he's done, I've been, I've been curious as to how he would do in strongman. You know, yeah. because he uh, certainly doesn't have the uh, traditional strongman build. You know. No. I mean, he's, he's, he's lean. I mean, you know, I guess you could say like a Marius Pujanowski kind of you know, build, but, but he, he yep. doesn't even appear to be as big as that, you yeah. know, or, or a, a Yoka Ahola or somebody like that. He mm-hmm. just, he's just ungodly strong and young. Yeah. I mean, unbelievably young, but I, I know, and it's interesting because I remember, I was talking to Gary Stewart about this last week and he was saying, you know, training for strongman is so much different than training for powerlifting and you can be a great powerlifter and not be good at, at strongman, mm-hmm. you know. And, and he was talking about a couple of, of the events and how they, there's really no carryover from powerlifting to some of those events. So it'll be interesting. I mean, I, I do think that the guy has certainly got uh, the, uh, the tools, you know, um, the tools to do it and, yeah. uh, and, and the strength and the will. So, so it'll right. be interesting to see how he does. I mean, I don't expect him to, like, beat Brian Shaw or Half Thor anytime soon. Yeah. You know, but uh, it'd still be interesting. James, what video is it where he lifts the inch? At, isn't it? It's at the end of one of his videos, but I, I can't, I, I can't remember which one it was. Uh, I think it's like the initial. It's like the first video that showed up on the channel uh, with him and Half Thor that I recall showing up. The one but like it, world's it, it strongest one man and world's strongest bodybuilder become training partners. It might be that one. I, yep. I'm trying to think. Uh, is that the one? Well, he's he's doing like a circus belt that says Rogue on it. Looks like he's lifting it thumbless, maybe. Okay. Because I, I know, know in that other one, they do farmer's walk and stuff. They start yeah. out doing deadlifts in that, yeah, in that video. Yeah, it's not that one. I, I kind of cycled through that whole, through that whole yeah. video. The video starts with, I think, him talking, and then they're doing deadlifts, and he's got the axle. Yep. And and half the word is just lifting a uh, barbell with yep. a bunch of. There you go. I, I found it. It's um. Yeah. It's the one that says "World's Strongest Man" and "World's Strongest Bodybuilder Become Training Partners," and then you yeah. want to go to about 37 minutes, and they start rolling the inch dumbbell out. So half Thor picks it up first, which yep. um, if you if you remember a couple three years ago, uh, you ha ha, you had a video up where. He uh, half Thor tried to lift an inch dumbbell and couldn't do it. 
or rather I, do I, wanna, I don't want to say couldn't do it, but he didn't lift it. So yeah. whether he actually tried his hardest to do it or not, we don't know, but um, he lifts it pretty darn easy here in this video. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm sure, you know, that's one of those things that motivated him. You know, watching him in that old video, Arn Nestling with Devin, I was sitting there thinking to myself, gosh, Hastor looks like he could, like, hook grip the inch dumbbell with yeah. that hand. So, but, uh, but yeah, uh, he, he lifted it without too much trouble. There's a little tilt in one of their lifts. I can't remember which one, but, but there's certainly a little tilt. But still, I mean, look, it's the inch dumbbell. Very yeah. impressive stuff. And then what's this other dumbbell that they hit at the end? It's all shiny. Is that that one that they I had don't made know. for the for the yeah. rogue uh, for the one arm overhead? Event? They might have. I saw that thing and I was like, "What is that?" I mean, I know it's not like the Millennium Bell or anything. No. So it I, looks like it's I got a no two idea. inch handle, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then again, those guys have some big hands, so it might yeah. just look like it's two inch. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah yeah I don't. I don't. I have no idea, to be honest with you. But I saw that bell too, and I was like, "That's pretty cool." Yeah. You know, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to see a, a, a few of the guys like like you and 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 Tanner and Rich Williams, guys like that on on that bell. I think that right. would be interesting. It would. It would so. be really cool. I see these guys don't necessarily get it off the ground too much. I, I guess it hops a little bit. One of the bells. Yeah. Yeah, at no point do they, like, get it, like, up off the ground, you know. Which I don't know the way yeah. to know, but I, I think it's, like, over well, well in excess of 200 pounds. Uh, yeah, I do, too, and I can't remember if they said it. I remember scrolling through some of the comments. I can't remember if someone asked either, and I was just like, uh, you know, it's heavy. It's too right. heavy for them to lift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Well, any other feats that you uh, saw over the last week that you'd like to mention? Not for this week. No, I mean, we covered a lot. Cool, man. Yeah, we did. Everybody's doing a great job posting lots of stuff using the hashtag. Uh, I encourage everybody to subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm looking to get 15,000 this year, so help me out if you can. Feel free to share the video with anyone that you like or any videos on the channel that you find uh, helpful. Go ahead and share that with your friends. Um, naturally, hit the like button. That is also going to help us out because it's going to get it's going to present the video across the platform more often and get it in front of more people's eyes. And the title of this video is going to have Larry Wheels in it, so that's going to help us. So uh, we'll do a little click banking, uh, click baiting, if you will. And um, it's all in the name of spreading the word of grip because the first rule of grip sport is you tell everyone about grip sport. Uh, James, anything else you'd like to say? You go ahead, man. The show is yours. Uh, yeah, I don't have the whole thing that Alan has where he, like, you know, reads the whole thing. He probably doesn't even have to read it anymore. But yeah. essentially, uh, you know, yeah, we'll see you next week.